morning and thank you so much for joining our service. Um, we're just going to get into a time of, of praise and worship. Hallelujah. Just open up your heart to the Lord um, that you may receive his praise and worship. Amen.
Father God, we enthrone you with our worship. We exalt your mighty name in this place. We say, let your name be lifted up. Let your name be lifted up, O Father.
Jesus. You are good. In the morning I'll sing you are good. In the evening I'll sing you are good. You are good to me. Somebody say you are good In the morning I'll sing you are good And in the evening I'll sing you are good You are good to me
thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are faithful. You are faithful, oh Lord. Never have you left me. We are not forsaken. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your covering. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome, 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 welcome to our Sunday service. I just want to commend you for taking time out of your day to join us as we worship the Lord, to join us as we share the word of God this morning. I know that there are thousand other places that are pulling you that are drawing you but you have been disciplined enough just to come this morning to make sure that you have spent some time in the presence of the Lord that is commendable and I just want to encourage you to continue to seek his face the word of God says give unto the Lord the glory due to his name worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness amen Amen. This Sunday is a special Sunday. We have started this year strong. We have started it with, an, with, with a girth and a, a vigor. We are fasting and seeking the Lord's face. And one thing I know is that he is faithful. He is faithful. And when we look for him, when we seek his face, we are sure to find him. He is sure to bring revelation upon revelation, glory upon glory, and lifting us from one level to the next. I want to encourage you and just to thank you for the work you've been doing you've been keeping the work of God going in your giving and in your tithes I just want to encourage you to continue when you sow in the house of the Lord you're sowing where no canker worms, where there's no moth, where there's no rust that can come upon your wealth. But indeed, he's a great God that continues to open doors for us. He continues to make ways in the wilderness. Amen. And I just want to encourage you to continue to give. Um, I'm sure our media team will have our giving number up on the screen. Um, just um, give your tithes and your offerings. And as we... Um, continue in our fasting i want to encourage you i know that as we're nearing the end temptation starts to come you start to feel hungrier i know it starts to feel like you just cannot go on that you're you feel like you're about to faint but i want to tell you that it's in that time when the battle is thickest that your victory is coming that you're just on the verge of your victory so continue keep on you know what even if you're feeling that you know this time I want to make it to the end of the month go ahead whatever you feel you need to do whatever you feel the Lord pushing you to do but as a church our fasting will um it will end tomorrow on Monday and I just want to encourage you give yourself a pat on the back and say I have done well I have done well to begin this year seeking the Lord's face looking for him looking for him reading his word perusing the word of God finding what he's doing what he's saying in this time amen oh wonderful amen I just want to clap hands for you and just encourage you that you know what this is not the only time that you should fast. If you feel that some time in the year you want to do a personal fast, something you want to do for yourself, for your family, even for your friends. The word of God says this kind does not go but by prayer and fasting. Do it. Whatever you feel God is leading you to do, do that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Today I want to share the word with you from 2 Samuel. Uh, chapter 9, it's a very familiar scripture. Um, I was raised in the church, so this is one of those scriptures that I would hear over and over again being shared with different revelations, uh, revelation upon revelation. So I know if I start to read it, you'll be like, oh, yes, I've heard that. Um, I know this scripture. I just want to encourage you that in every every time the word of God is being shared a new revelation is coming your way so open your heart make your heart fertile ground to receive the word of God amen and I will read now David said 
Is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. So when they called him to David, the king said to him, Are you Ziba? He said, At your service. Then the king said, Is there not still someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. So the king said, where is he? And Ziba said to the king, indeed, he is in the house of Maker, the son of Amiel in Lodibar. Then the king David sent and brought him out of the house of Maker, the son of Amiel from Lodibar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, had come to David, he fell on his face, prostrated himself. Then David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, here is your servant. So David said, do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake, and will restore to you all the land of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall eat bread at my table continually. When he bowed himself and said, What is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as I? And the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said, I have given to your master's son all that belong to Saul and to all his house. You therefore and your sons and your servants shall work the land for him and you shall bring in the harvest that your master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's son shall eat bread at my table always. Amen. I will stop there. Um, Bless the reading of his word. Now let's just pray. Father, I want to thank you for your word, for a word in season. I thank you because your word is sharper than a double-edged sword. It pierces that division, that very division between the soul and the spirit, the bone and the marrow. Thank you, almighty Father, for your word, for speaking to us in this time, for speaking to us in this season, almighty God. Jehovah, I'm a vessel of clay. Speak through me, almighty God. Strengthen me, Jehovah, I pray for as I was just reading this word, I was so encouraged. I was very encouraged. I want to speak to a special person today. I want to speak to someone who is in a place of barrenness. I want to speak to someone who is in a place called Lodabar, who is in a place where you have given up, in a place that is desolate, someone that is, someone that is beginning to think that it is done for, it is over for me. You are my audience today. I want to encourage you this morning I just want to speak to you because you know there are times when we feel like we've been handicapped when the devil has had his way with us and we feel that you know what it is over there are times when we have dreams that are so big and sometimes we are dropped and we fall on our feet we fall and we begin to think I'm handicapped I'm done for there's nothing else that can come after this we abandon that which God had deposited upon us what he had told us that we could do we begin to think we're incapable so we abandon ship I want to speak to you today and encourage you that you know what God is about to show you his kindness God wants to do something Something for you that you had long given up on. God wants to lift you out of a place of barrenness and do something special for you. Even when you're asking yourself that even a dead dog as I, what is it that my master would want with me? I want to speak to you today and tell you that God has not forgo forgotten you. He has not abandoned you. He is still on the throne and he still has you in his mind and in his heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, I want to begin by talking about Mephibosheth. He was the son of Jonathan, who was the son of Saul. It was no secret what had happened to this uh, to the house of Saul. It, it had been a time where there had been so much strife between David and Saul. Saul had been after David wanting to kill him. He wanted to do away with him. He was so filled with jealousy. He was like, you know what? This little boy has got to go. He was seeking after him. He wanted to annihilate him, chasing after him. And at the end of the day, what happened was that Saul and his sons had been killed on the battlefield by the Philistines. And what happened is a servant in the house of Saul was running with Mephibosheth and she dropped him on his feet and he was lame in his feet. 
and he was taken from the palace into Lodiba. Lodiba is described as a biblical ghetto. It's described as a place of barrenness, as a place with no communication. It is said to be a place of no pasture. It is said to be a place of being cut off. And that was where Mephibosheth found himself in. In a matter of hours from the palace to a place of no communication, a place of being cut off. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes you feel like you cannot go any lower. You feel like you cannot continue to sink any lower. When at that time, when you feel, you know what? There's no, there, there's no more, there's nowhere else to go from here. I'm so deep down under, there's nowhere else that I can go. And all of a sudden, you discover a new low. And things are just going haywire. Things are just going not the way you had planned. So many things are going wrong. And sometimes you don't even know what's going on. At that time, Mephibosheth was just a little child who was caught up in the battle between his grandfather and King David, who was caught up between a battle between his grandfather and the Philistines. And all of a sudden, his life changed in a matter of moments, in a matter of a minute. And all of a sudden, what he knew was no more. Sometimes that's the situation that we find ourselves in. Things might be going well. You feel like, you know what? I finally had it. I'm on my feet. And all of a sudden, things start to turn around. Things start to go in a way that you had not anticipated, in a way you had not planned. Sometimes it's not because of what you have done. You haven't done anything wrong. You find yourself battling things that, are, that you had never even heard of. You find yourself dealing maybe with lawsuits. You find yourself dealing with sadness, with heartaches, with heartbreaks. You said, you know what? I'm going to give my heart to a person. You give your heart to them, but you didn't realize that they were so damaged. They were not in a position to take care of your heart. They were not in a position to love you as you were supposed to be loved. And all of a sudden, you find yourself dealing with heartbreak that you do not even know how you came upon it. It happens to us sometimes. Sometimes COVID comes from nowhere. All of a sudden, that job, that was your livelihood. It's not there anymore. And you find yourself joining the unemployment line. And as long as from here to there, and they're telling you that, you know what? We can't look at your issue for months, for months, for months. And you're saying, God, I've been going to church. I've been giving. How have I come upon a situation like this? What is going on? Why me? We can find ourselves questioning that, you know what? Yesterday I was in the palace. How am I finding myself in low debar today? That happens. It happens in our lives. There's circumstances around us. Sometimes it's by our own doing. It's because of the things that we have failed to do. It's because of what we have failed to do to deal with that was behind us that has come back it has it has metastasized it has come back to haunt us in our future and all of a sudden we're from we have moved from the palace and we find ourselves in low deba it's a situation that we face in life sometimes but i want to tell you something that when god's kindness has come upon you there's nothing that will hold you in a place of barrenness nothing can contain you in a place of no communication nothing can contain you in a place of being cut off hallelujah i just want you to agree with me today and say when god's kindness comes upon me nothing can hold me in a place of being cut off in a place where i am a nobody in a place where i'm dealing with poverty in a place where i'm dealing with my issues of yesterday when god kindness comes upon you it lifts you up from a place of low debar to the king's table it lifts you up from a place of of having no communication, of feeling alone, of feeling abandoned to a place where you are at the king's table, dining with the king himself, my grandfather's enemy sitting with him and him showing me kindness, restoring to me what the enemy had stolen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we find ourselves in that place and it is that place that Jesus saw us in when he said that I'm going to abdicate my throne. Somebody needs to be saved. It was that place of barrenness that Jesus wanted to take us out of. Mephibosheth, when I was reading about it, it means exterminating the idol. It also means from the mouth of shame. 
I want to share with you today that even as your pastors, we're not immune from situations that are heartbreaking. We're not immune from some situations that tear us down, that keep us up at night. There are situations that start to make us question what God has told us. All these things that he told us when we were, you know, when we were, um, getting ready to start the church to launch the ministry god was speaking and he was telling us that you know i'm going to do this i'm going to do that but there are situations that we face that, that start to make us question that is this really what god had in store for us is this really what god told us did we hear him right is this where he was leading us but let me tell you something what the devil does is he begins to lift up some things that want to move that want to move what God placed. That want to be the idol. That want to remove what God had said, had spoken, that word of God that had been sparing you and moving you. And it wants to move you from that place into a place of disbelief, in a place of, into a place of not trusting, into a place of questioning. Once you enter a place of doubt, then the enemy is saying, yes, I've had my way with you. But Mephibosheth means exterminating the idol. You know, the word of God says... There is power. There's that power that we have in Jesus, that our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds and anything that seeks to exalt itself above the knowledge of the, of the Savior of Christ himself, above knowing what Christ has ordained for us, above knowing what he has spoken to us, above knowing what he has placed in our lives and in our hearts. That's what the, that's what the weapons of God are mighty for, pulling down those strongholds. What God had spoken to you about he has told you some things you have felt moved to do some things but the enemy has raised some idols and those idols are beginning to govern you they're beginning to tell you that you're too old they're beginning to tell you that you have failed that you cannot amount to anything they're beginning to tell you that nobody in your family has done it there's nothing special about you there's nothing peculiar about you you're just an ordinary being those the enemy is starting to raise idols that are bringing you into a place of questioning your identity that are telling you that you know what you're in America. Look at what's going on. Look at what's going on in the world. This is not the time for you to say, I want to try this. I want to attempt that. Even if God has spoken to you, you start to say, you know what? Maybe it's not the time. Maybe I'm not adequate. Maybe I'm not enough. Maybe there are better people. Maybe there are more educated people. There are more qualified people that can do this. That is the idolatry that the enemy begins to raise. When you start looking at your, and your, your shortcomings and you start to believe them more than you believe the word of God, you start to look at them and you start to uplift them and you start to look at them and say, okay, this is my reality. My reality is that I can no longer do this. My reality is that I'm meant to be a mediocre person. I'm meant to be a person that stays at this certain level. Then you have raised that, you have raised that thing and made it your idol. But like I said, Mephibosheth means exterminating that idol. Because David is a type of Christ. David says, is there anyone from the house of Saul that I can show God's kindness? That I can show God's mercy? Look, the reason why he said God's kindness is there was, there was no smooth transition between the throne of Saul to the throne of David. It was besmirched. It was, not, it, it was full of strife, discontentment of disagreement they were warring they were arguing there was nothing smooth about that transition by all means those households were meant to be enemies they were not meant to sit at the same table and dine together but that's why David says I want to show the kindness of God and that is the same situation as us. We were not deserving of his mercy. Lodiba was what we deserved because of where we had come from, because of the things we had done, because of the places we had been, because of the words we had spoken over ourselves. Lodiba was meant to be our inheritance. It was what we were supposed to inherit. It was what we deserved. But God's kindness said, I'm lifting you out of a place of barrenness. I want to put you at the king's table. 
table. I want you to dine with me. I want to give you the earth and all its fullness. I want to lift you up where you deserved a casting down. What I want to do is to lift you up so others can say there is a casting down. You will say there is a lifting up because I'm showing you a special kindness. I'm showing you my mercy. I have come. I have come so that Lodiba will not be your portion. I've come so that Lodiba will not be your inheritance. But what would be your inheritance is what was my initial plan for you. What was my ultimate plan for you? For you to be heirs with Christ. For you to inherit the earth. What was my plan? Was for you to be the head and not the tail. Was for you to speak a word and your word becomes what you say and your world becomes what you speak. What my plan was was for you to have authority to trample all the serpents and scorpions. Therefore I've come to show you kindness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, you know, there are times when I've heard people, I've spoken to a lot of people that come to me and they're saying, you know what, Pastor, I feel that I, I, I can't do this. Simple things, you know, we sit down with people and we're like, you know what, there are these jobs apply and someone is like, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I'm adequate. I don't think I'm enough. I don't think that I qualify. Yes. <laughs> I don't deny that. <laughs> I don't deny the desperation of your situation. I don't deny that your situation might be dire. I don't deny that your circumstances might be sad. I don't deny that they may be constraining. I understand, I understand, Mephibosheth, that you were dropped on your feet and from then on you were never able to use your feet. I understand, Mephibosheth, that your situation changed in a matter of moments. I understand that you were went from the palace and you went to Lodiba. I understand that you had things taken from you, things that you thought were your livelihood. I understand. I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that you have found yourself in the lowest of lows. I'm not denying it. That you know what? You come from a situation where nobody knows what it is to be successful. I am not denying that. I'm not denying that you are inadequate. I'm not denying that there are things that you have limitations to do but what I am confident of what I do know is that where we are in our weakness his strength is made perfect that he came so that he may fill our inadequacies he came so that he may take over where we fall short that he may be that completion the word of God says when that which is perfect and complete comes that which is half and half that which is in part that which is incomplete will be moved away so what the word of God is saying is where your effort fell short where your effort was not enough I am coming to make you enough I am coming to make you adequate where your effort was being in the house of Mekir in the house of Mekir yes you were taken care of they did the best that they could for you yes you tried it with your own power Yes, you tried it with what you knew. Yes, you tried it with your own mind. And you fell short. But guess what? When the kindness of God comes upon you, when the kindness of, of God locates you, it takes you from a place of trying with your own effort. It takes the wrestle out of your blessing. It takes the fighter out of your blessing. It takes the having to strive for it, having to fight for it, having to war for it. It takes it from you and it gives to you that which you do not deserve. It opens doors for you that you had no right to walk through. It opens doors for you to walk through oh, before kings and princes, lifts you up before, before men and men and women of honor, men and women of note. And there you are. There you find yourself because it is the mercy and the kindness of God. Like I said, I'm not denying that the situation can be dire. I don't deny the desperation of the situation. I don't deny your inadequacies. I don't deny my own inadequacies. What I do know is that I serve a God in heaven who said, I am enough. Who said, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. Who said, I will war for you. Who said, I will train those hands for war. I will train those hands to war. I will train you for battle. Where you feel that you cannot do it, I will come. I will come and 
and I will make you enough. Oh, he says that I will make you more than a conqueror. <laughs> It's not about what you can do. It has never been about what you can do. It has never been about what you know. It has never been about what you know. Because what you know could never take you out of Lodiba. What you know could never take you out of a place of barrenness. What can lift you up in a matter of moments, in the same matter of moments that took you from the palace to the, to the biblical ghetto is the same thing. The, it's, it's, it's got that same it's got that same speed to take you again from Lodiba onto the king's table to have restored to you that which belongs to you and what belongs to you is what God has given you what belongs to you is not what the enemy says you deserve but that which God has given to you amen I know sometimes as Christians we have a problem where God is calling us when the king calls you to his house, King David sent servants to call Mephibosheth. They said, Ziba, go and get your master. Mephibosheth didn't start running around and saying, I've been called by the king, I've been called by the king, goes back into the house and sits. What Mephibosheth did was that he went to the king, lied prostrate, and he said, here I am your servant. As Christians, sometimes... We understand that God has something special for us. We have this form of godliness, but we deny its power. We begin to, to understand that, yes, he died for me. Yes, he can do this. But we have this fear of implementing the, what God has, in, has, has, has told us to implement. We have this fear of taking that step of, from one position into the next. We have that fear of going from one level to the next. We just sit in church all the time, proclaiming claiming and lifting our hands and singing loudly, declaring amen. When the word of God comes, we say amen. But when it comes time for us to move, to answer the king's call, you don't answer the king's call by saying amen in church and sitting. You acknowledge the king's call when you say amen, but you answer it when you go where he commands you to go. You answer it when he does what he tells you to do. When the king calls you, you answer. Like Mephibosheth, you get up however you walk, whether you go in a wheelchair with your crutches, whether you go, whether you crawl there, whatever you need to do, but when the king calls, you answer. Because when you answer the king, there's a, there's a blessing that comes with that. What, what happens when you answer the king is that he will say, sit at my table. He will send servants to till your fields. He will send servants to work for you. He will restore to you the lands that, had, that you had not even owned to begin with. Mephibosheth was just a little boy when Saul, when Saul died. You see, Saul died in such desperate circumstances that he was asking his servant, kill me, he said. And the servant said, no, I can't do that. So he fell on his own sword. That's how desperate the situation of Saul was. And Mephibosheth, that's what he knew, to go from a place of having all these servants serving you of kingship of princeship of uh, uh, maybe he stood to be the next king he was next in line for the throne after Jonathan whatever it was and all of a sudden he found himself in that place but you know what when God says it is time when God says it is time when he says get up from your slumber when he says I'm calling you out of Lodiba you walk out of Lodiba the word of God as we were as the men of uh, one of the men of God was sharing this week, he says, "You speak, you speak it. You don't just receive it. When you hear that, there's a lifting." It says, "Where others say there's a casting down, we say there is a lifting up by the power of the words of our mouth, by the power of our actions, by the power of our deeds. What we do should show that we have been called out of Lodiba. We have been called out of that place of barrenness. We have been called out of that place of being cut off and we are made new. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. As I wind up, I just want to encourage you that the circumstances around you, whatever they speak, whatever they say, whatever they look like, whatever they are, your past or even your now, whatever it is saying, whatever it, 
it looks like no matter how dire the circumstances are, there's never a situation where God is caught by surprise in heaven and says, oh, oh, what do I do? There's never a situation. Read the Bible from Genesis to Revelations. There's never a situation where God is asking, how can I come out of this? How can I bring them out of this? Oh, look at this. This is too serious. I cannot do this. This is too desperate. This has overcome me. And knowing that, knowing that he has no track record of failure, knowing that his kindness can pull a person out of a place of barrenness, I want to exhort you to believe this morning. I want to exhort you to do that which you had abandoned. To believe again. I want to encourage you to step out in faith. To come out of your load bar. Because your king is calling you. Your king is saying I have something better for you. Your king is saying there is something bigger for you. Your king is saying I have something for you that is mightier than what you know. I want you to come out of that place of barrenness. Knowing that where you are going is sure. When God calls you, when God says it's time to move, oh, rest assured, rest assured that he has gone before you, made the crooked path straight. He has gone before you. He has leveled every mountain. He has filled up every valley. When he calls you, he has set a table for you, even in the presence of your enemies. You are about to dine. You are about to dine in the presence of your enemies. You are about to dine in the presence of that which said you will not amount to anything. You are about to dine in the presence of that which was supposed to kill you. You are about to dine in the presence of that which was supposed to pull you back. You are about to dine in the presence of what was supposed to annihilate you, what was supposed to destroy you. You are about to dine before it. You are about to dine before what was spoken against you, before what was said was supposed to, to destroy you. You are about to dine before for it. You are about to dine with the king. You are about to dine with the king. You are about to dine with the king. Somebody you need to get up. Get up from your slumber. Get out of that place of desperation. Move like God is telling you to move. Trust again. I'm encouraging you to believe again. I'm encouraging you to believe again. I am encouraging you to say, I am here. I'm here, Lord. I'm here. Show me your kindness. Show me your mercy. Show me your goodness. Oh, I'm encouraging you to get up from your slumber, to get up from where you were lying down. Get out of that corner where you are feeling sorry for yourself. Get out of that corner where you have told yourself that it is over. Get out of your corner. Take out that book of your dreams. Take it out. Begin to write in it again. Begin to re-strategize. Begin to make a new way forward. Whatever you need to do, whatever you need to do, if you need to put on your boots, get ready again. Get ready again. Say, I am coming out. I am coming out of that place place of desperation. I'm coming out of that place of being cut off. I'm coming out of that place of no inheritance. I'm about to sit with the king again. I'm about to dine with the king again. I am about to dine in that place. I'm about to dine in that place, in that place of kingship. All oh, come out, child of God. That time to feel sorry for yourself. It has to be behind you now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, mighty God. I thank you for your word, oh God. Thank you for your word that is encouraging. Thank you for your word that is in season. Thank you, almighty God. Thank you, Jehovah, for bringing us out of barrenness, for bringing us out of that place of desperation. Thank you, God, for bringing us out of that place of being cut off. Thank you for bringing us out of a place of no communication, for bringing us out of a place where we, were, where we thought we we were done for. Thank you for another opportunity. Thank you for another chance. Thank you for another chance. Thank you for a fresh start. Thank you, Jehovah, for a fresh start. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray.
Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for your presence. I just want to encourage you again. Come out of that place of no communication. You don't belong there. God has something in store for you. God has something bigger. We receive his kindness this morning. Enjoy your week. Step out of it knowing that you have been brought back to the king's table. You have been brought back to a place of glory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the King, in the name of Him who is able to present us holy and blameless before God. Oh, thank you. Thank you, mighty God. Amen. Amen.